Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our Gospel lesson, Mark chapter 4. And Jesus said, The kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground. He sleeps and rises night and day, and the seed sprouts and grows. He knows not how. In our text, we find Jesus teaching his disciples about the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is not like any kingdom in the world. Jesus said in John 18, my kingdom is not of this world. Jesus says that the kingdom of God does not come by power or might or force of law. The kingdom of God comes by proclamation. By the word of God. Jesus is the king. He's the only true king. And his kingdom is found where there is faith in Christ. So this is the way that God works on us. We are trudging across the wilderness of this world. It is hot, difficult, and dry. There is no water, no forgiveness, No hope. And then a water pump appears on a very long and seldom used trail across Nevada's Armagosa Desert. The following letter was found in a baking powder can wired to the handle of an old pump. This pump is all right. As of June 1932, I put a new sucker washer into it and it ought to last for years, but the washer dries out and the pump has got to be primed. Under the white rock, I buried a bottle of water. There's enough water in it to prime the pump, but not if you drink some first. Pour about one-fourth down the pump and let her soak to wet the leather. Then pour in the rest medium fast and pump like crazy. You'll get water. This well has never run dry. Have faith. When you get watered up, fill the bottle and put it back like you found it for the next fella. Signed, Desert Pete. B.S. Don't go drinking the water first. Prime the pump with it and you'll get all you can hold. God's word tells us that the world we live in is amazing And it is broken. Likewise, we too are amazing and broken. Death is the result of that brokenness. But God has made a way for us to overcome the results of the brokenness. And in fact, Jesus is the way. We desire life, and he is the water of life. If we will count on Him, trust in Him, have faith in Him, even though things are broken, everything will be okay. Jesus worked for us in His life, His death, and His resurrection has changed our destination, changed our future. So no matter what happens to us in this life, and we know that plenty is going to happen to us here in this broken and fallen world. Our future, our eternity is secure in Christ. Christianity is all about receiving and believing. It's all about faith in Jesus Christ. And God's mission is to move us to the point where we trust Him. Where we trust Him more than we trust the things around us more than we trust ourselves. That takes us back to Desert Pete, dying of thirst and looking for help. Do we trust God enough to wait? When we find ourselves in a tough situation, we want answers. We want solutions. A pastor said, A young woman in our parish was going through a serious crisis in her life. It was 
extremely difficult for her to do what she had to do. And I assured her that God would help her through her time of trial. And instantly she retorted, almost in a sneer, Look, Pastor, you know I've been a good church member, but the first time I really need God, He's nowhere around. I prayed and I got no answer. I asked for help, nothing. Then I knew that I had what I had to do. I was going to have to do this by myself. Oh, in all of this, I don't even know whether God exists or not. I've searched, but I can't find him. So if God doesn't come up with the answer we want and come up with it soon, then it's time for us to take matters into our own hands. But God tells us to take comfort in his word and to wait. Wait for the Lord. When we believe in the promise of eternal life, the promise that we are not alone, then we become willing to wait for God to act. In the Old Testament, the word that is translated for wait and hope are the same root word. If we know and love God, then we do not see waiting as a waste of time. Michael Newman, in his book, Hope When Your Heart Breaks, says, If God puts you in the position of waiting, don't resist it. Stop fighting and resenting the pause you're experiencing. Instead, embrace it. Lean into the waiting with prayer by resting on God's promise and drawing strength from people He has placed in your life. Wait expectantly. God makes time your friend and fills the space of waiting with His grace. Watch for His surprises. Be on the lookout for His loving care. When you find yourself waiting for God to act, you are in the treasured territory of being drawn closer to Him. It's not always comfortable, and it may never be your first choice for what life would bring, but it will deepen your relationship with your Savior and lead you to be amazed at His faithful work for you. Contrary to what you might expect, Waiting isn't God's way to weaken your walk with Him. It is His divine and wise strategy for strengthening you during heartbreak. So, we have to pour some of the water God gives us back into the pump and wait and let those promises soak in. Then we pour the rest of the water back into the pump We go to his church. We listen to his word. We receive his sacrament. We love and are loved by his people. And over time, we have the blessings of life lived with Christ and his presence. How how does that happen? Jesus says it is a mystery. The kingdom of God is a mystery. Just like planting seeds is a mystery. The kingdom of God, Jesus says, is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground. He sleeps and rises night and day. The seed sprouts and grows and he doesn't have a clue how it happens. Why does a seed that looks to us like it is dead come to life when we plant it? We can observe how it happens, but why does it happen? We just don't know. We listen to the Word of God. We read. We think about it. Reflect on the Word. We come to the Lord's Supper. And sometimes slowly, and other times rapidly, we grow. We grow in the love of and grace of Jesus Christ. And it happens during the craziest times. It happens in suffering 
and in blessing, in confusion and in understanding. And we begin to trust Jesus, to trust Him more than we trust ourselves or the things around us. In his book, Out of the Whirlwind, Mark Tab writes, Jesus tells us to trust Him enough to believe He knows what He is doing. When His actions don't make sense, trust Him. When the windows of heaven seem to be open extra wide and life can't get any better, trust Him. When the bottom falls out and life turns hard, trust Him. Good times and bad, happy and sad, trust Him. What will God do? I have no idea. But I do know this. He isn't making things up on the fly. He knows what He's doing. Now, I must trust Him enough to entrust my life to Him even when I would rather not. God is working in our lives. But it is work that we do not always see or understand. So sometimes we just keep planting seeds, believing they will grow without our help, believing that God is in charge, believing that He's not making this up as He goes along. Jesus said, The kingdom of God is like the natural order in growing crops and the harvest. We surrender to the natural order of planting and harvesting. Oh, we can complain and worry and pace the floor, but we are not in control. When we surrender to the reign and rule of God, we find out that life is taking us somewhere important. That waiting is not a waste of time. The kingdom of God is all about faith. Or another good Lutheran word for that, trust. Trust leads to action. From head to heart to hands. Following Jesus, loving others, forgiving others, walking by faith, not by sight. As Luther says, but how do we approach our Redeemer and Savior? Do we approach Him with personal sacrifice and religious rules? No. We just hold on to the Son in faith. Then you'll be able to tear right through death and the devil. For the passage says, everyone who believes in Him will not die, but will have eternal life. Accept it as true. Accept this wonderful truth that God loved the world and say, I believe in the Son of God, who was also the Son of Mary, who was nailed to the cross and was lifted up. Then you will experience a new birth. Death and sin will no longer condemn you. They will no longer bring you harm, sorrow, or pain. Whoever believes in the Son will have eternal life. The kingdom of God is a kingdom of faith, a kingdom of trust. As Tab said, what will God do? I have no idea. But I do know this. He isn't making things up on the fly. He knows what he's doing. Now I must trust Him enough to entrust my life to Him even when I would rather not. The kingdom of God, Jesus said, is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground. He sleeps and rises night and day. The seed sprouts and grows. He knows not how. We pray. Lord, We are so thankful to you for getting us through this broken world, for helping us through our broken lives. Help us to trust you. Help us to say, 
I believe in the Son of God, who is also the Son of Mary, who was nailed to the cross and was lifted up. Be with us while we wait. Wait, not like the word world who does not know you, but wait in hope. Hope that knows you are with us and that you love us. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus.